Hello, so in this video, I want to pretend that I'm a student uh, about to present uh, my favorite medium to the class. And in this case, it's graphite pencil, gray lead pencil. And I want to also look at a few options of how I might want to get the, um, the message across. So let's look at uh, the first option is to pre-record a video to make a video where I'm demonstrating how I use graphite pencil. And then I would then upload the video to Moodle or if I have a YouTube page, I can upload it there, and that way people can get to watch it. So an example would be, um, you know, setting up a video camera, and I'm lucky I've got uh, this pretty good video camera at home with uh, some nice lights, and then I would make a video that sounds something like this. All right, so here I have my Arches 300 uh, GSM hot press watercolor paper and this is my reference photo from hanging rock now ordinarily i would um use a real rock as reference if i've got it um and you can see it picks up all the uh texture and wonderful little uh, detail that you wouldn't normally get from a photograph so we're going to use the reference photo today now uh, i've got all my pencils here I use uh, four different types of pencils, um, HB, 2B, 4B, and the 2H. I've been using those for years. Um, the tracing I did off the photo, I used a, um, a poor man's light box. It's uh, basically a window, um, and it worked pretty well, so just to get the basic outline. Uh, what else do I have? I have my hand guard, so uh, just a clean piece of paper that I can uh, rest my wrist on, and that way I can avoid any smudges. I've got my 100 watt daylight globe. I'll just move that into position. There we go. Hope that doesn't block the view. And uh, I've got my blending sticks, different types. Um, my sand paper board for cleaning the blending sticks. I've got my kneadable eraser, um, my plastic eraser, and I've also got one of these wonderful little tools. A battery operated eraser. There's the Derwent one and then this uh, cheaper one that I got from um, almost like a $2 shop. All right, so um, before I begin the drawing, uh, I just want to talk about uh, cleanliness. So make sure that uh, the surface area is clean, my hands are clean, and of course I've got my hand guard. So uh, when I look at the photo, uh, how to begin? So I'm going to just take the HB. And um, you can see there's light and dark areas, obviously. So uh, I'm just going to gently shade in um, the sort of mid-gray tones first. And even though this is hot press smooth paper, I'm still getting quite a bit of texture coming through. Now I'm holding the pencil like a butter knife and normally I wouldn't do that, um, but this is just for the camera so you don't get my big head in the shot. So I just go around all this area here uh, doing... Uh... Okay, so that was option one. Uh, we'll leave it there. If you want to watch the full demonstration, uh, you can go to Moodle and I'll have it upload, uploaded there on the Extend Expertise page. Option two is where you do a live video recording uh, through Zoom. Now, I can't seem to get my phone or my camera to mirror the, onto the computer screen. So this is how you would normally do it. You would hook up your, let's say, to mobile camera. This is a homemade clamp that I made at home. Uh, all you need for a homemade clamp is a stack of books. In this case, I used a steel ruler and a bulldog clip, and that worked rather well. Um, if you're curious as to see what I actually videoed, this is what uh, it turned out like. So, you know, if you were to do this via Zoom, you would have a live hookup, and then everyone who's on Zoom can actually see you drawing uh, live. Um, you can do it with your computer camera, but you've got to angle it, and it doesn't always work that well. But you know, if you can manage to do a live uh, recording, that's great. Maybe that, that'll that work for you. Uh, but you'll need to sort of work on how um, how it's going to how it's going to happen. All right. So option three is uh, 
something that I use a lot, which is my PowerPoint slideshows. You can use any program to create a slideshow, but it, it would look something like this. You know, you'd introduce your medium, talk about what it is, why you love it, and then you might do a bit of a backstory as to um, why this is your favorite medium. And here you can see my home set up and I've got my 100 watt daylight globe. Um, you would obviously maybe use examples of previous work to show, you know, if you are using graphite pencil to draw rocks and not, not a bad idea to, to show that. You can talk about reference photos. So when I create my uh, drawings in pencil, I spend quite a bit of time gathering old photos usually ones that are um, royalty free or out of copyright uh, or I take my own photos so then I might spend some time developing concepts and then this is my process I usually start with a pencil drawing once it's completed then I take that into Photoshop and I add digital color and I do that with every single um, drawing is uh, it starts as black and white graphite and then ends up as digital color and that's the process that you can see on the screen at the moment. So yeah, I, I guess if I was to do a presentation to the class, if I was a student, I'd be looking at how to use pencil to uh, create rocks. Um, for my hanging rock artwork that you saw earlier, that sample drawing, um, I usually take a lot of photos, um, especially if I can get to the place myself. And then I would choose the photo that I want to use as reference. Uh, I then convert it from color to black and white because I am using graphite which is grayscale anyway so it's better to have a black and white photo and then I'll take it from there. Um, I do mention in the video that I prefer to look at rocks up close and just get very intimate and study them. Uh, nothing like a live object in your hand. Uh, and then these are materials that I mentioned earlier. The Arche's watercolor paper. I tend to use smooth. And then I've got my lovely um, Mars Lumograph pencils. I just absolutely love them. There's my poor man's light box. Uh, it just if you haven't got a light box at home, yeah, you can just use a window. And uh, yeah, it's just another shot. And this is how the pencil drawing ended up, by the way. So you get to see a bit more detail. That's a close up. And that took about an hour and a half. All that work that you see in front of you. So slideshows are great because you can um, do the voiceover just like I'm doing now and people can see the images on the screen and hear your voice at the same time. If you haven't got any way of creating a slideshow like PowerPoint or any other program, maybe you can do a PDF, uh, create a PDF and this is where you put all your images together into one document and then it creates one single file. And here's a little video to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so you know how to create a PDF document. It's a great way to present a number of pages on the screen, full screen. Uh, for instance, um, if you double click a PDF document, you can then go to Acrobat, for instance, go to View and Full Screen. And from there on, it acts like a normal slideshow. So you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to advance forward. You can go backwards. Uh, it's quite effective, as you can see. Microsoft Word is a great program for creating PDF. You can create them in other programs as well. Um, even Preview, I think, creates PDFs. So as long as you've got the images, you can put them all together in a lovely single file like a PDF. Okay, thanks, Con. Right, so the last option uh, is probably easy if you've got a, a smartphone, is you just take a whole series of photos of the work that you're doing or the work that you would have presented during class. Um, all these JPEG images and then you present them on the screen again like a slideshow. So here's another video to demonstrate that. So let's say you have a bunch of images, photos um, or pics and you want to put them all together in some sort of slideshow. It's pretty easy. You select all of them, you would then right click and open with a program like Preview and then when the Preview opens you go to View and down to Slideshow. And from there on, it acts like a normal slideshow. You can actually use the arrow keys on your keyboard to advance forward or back, and you can array it as you go along. So from that point of view, it's pretty easy. So that's the uh, presentation completed. Um, and then at this point, you could ask uh, your audience for questions, and um, 
hopefully if the Zoom is behaving itself, we'll be able to interact with each other. So I'm going to give this a go and um, yeah, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions, but uh, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.